Hello everyone and I welcome you to the new BMW 7 Series. This is BMW's luxury flagship and as you can probably tell BMW have adopted an evolutionary approach to their design rather than revolutionary. The car starts at £64,500 and it's uh, made up currently of just two engine choices with a 3 litre petrol engine or in this case a 3 litre diesel. Now the amazing thing with this car is despite its size, bearing in mind it is over 5 meters in length, this 730D model can actually attain over 60 miles to the gallon and offers just CO2 emissions of 119 grams per kilometer, which considering its size and its girth is amazing for a luxury car. So talking a bit more about this model then, the, uh, the 730D, as I say, amazing low emission figures and exceptional fuel consumption. I mean, bearing in mind this is brand new, fa factory fresh, and in a mixture of driving I've still managed to get to over 50 to the gallon. Uh, it's not to say it's slow either, it's 0 to 60 in 6 seconds, an electronically governed top speed of 155 miles an hour. So just taking you through some of the designs that make this car really quite elegant in the flesh. Some cool technology as well which I'll go on to talk about. Classic BMW trademark of the big prominent kidney grill. This is huge in this car. And actually, looking at the details, these vents actually open and close to reduce air resistance to enable the car to really glide through the air. And then you have BMW's new laser light technology which really throws out so much light out onto the road. It, the BMW say that it's the best lighting technology available and you can see with the blue inserts that always tells you that this is a car with BMW's laser lights. This car as well uh, has BMW's X-Drive which is their optional four-wheel drive system and that's capable of sending 100% power to either the front or the rear wheels dependent on conditions. The idea being that it always gives you maximum grip and stability in whatever weather conditions you get. BMW of course realized that by just offering rear-wheel drive they were losing out a huge market to Audi so they had to come up with an equivalent. I'll take you inside for a closer look and I'll show some of the technology features as well. Just before I do take you inside, that badge is key. Uh, this car has managed to shed about 150 kilograms over its predecessor. The reasoning for that is that it is made up of a carbon fiber core which is half the weight of steel and even lighter than aluminium. And it also features a wide use of aluminium as well to really keep the weight down and to keep BMW's all important 50-50 weight distribution. In this car you've got a unique, I think it's BMW individual uh, leather colour, which I don't know if it's coming out, I would say is coffee coloured, each to their own. Uh, but the seats are exceptionally comfortable, offering massage as well and a multitude of ways to adjust. Familiar BMW interior, iDrive central screen there. In the back is literally where all the action happens and really why this car is designed in the way it is it, to offer exceptional rear seat comfort. As I say, a lot of the new emerging markets, a status is all about being driven rather than being the driver yourself. Hence why you get niceties like a cushion for the rear head restraint. Uh, the seats in the back can be heated, cooled, massaged, and they even give you a tablet system which control, you can control your seat from here move it across what else have we got climate control we can com control the media system as well um, again really just illustrating how it puts the rear passenger at the forefront of of the car really just give you an interior shot from the rear seat but I'll show you some of the technology on the car as well so much technology to go through I mean, it's a wonder the car moves given that it must be so laden down with all these bits of kit Familiar to all BMW drivers, I guess by now, the iDrive system, everything is controlled uh, by here. Now, whilst I'm here, I would just, this is a cool thing, the BMW offers what is called gesture control. So if I illustrate that. So simply by twirling your finger under a sensor in the overhead console, you can turn the music up and down. The apparent killing of Jihadi John in Syria which is very cool. It also allows you when you're making a phone call to 
If you swipe left, you can accept the call, swipe right, reject the call. The navigation system is important. It offers real-time traffic updates. The other point is that it uses, uh, it reads the road ahead, essentially, through the navigation to confirm that you're going to be in the right gear uh, at all times. And you can also have an option on the car which reads the road ahead to automatically set up the car for the best suspension settings to always give that magic carpet type ride. Over on the dashboard, as I showed earlier, this is the electronic uh, display. And if I just turn the car on, you can also then see, hopefully, the head-up display, not massively clear there, but it works really well on the road. And it also puts the navigation instructions on the uh, windscreen as well, which makes driving, especially around central London, incredibly easy. BMW also offer, well, they will offer shortly, a remote parking system. The remote park facility allows you to get out of the car and park your BMW using the key here, which is a smart key system. And you can move the car forward by pushing your thumb up and move it back by scrolling back on the screen. World first for the technology, and it's only available for cars, I think, coming up. Well, it'll be available on 2016 model cars. So unfortunately, it's not available on this car. You can also, on the smart key, uh, turn the lights off and on, check your fuel range, uh, sent the climate control system so that when you go to the car in the morning it's all nicely set and lovely and warm uh, when you get in the car. Uh, lovely key, really smart bit of kit. The only thing I would say is because it's so big, unless you have a bag or you always carry a bag around with you, I'm not sure it looks too great when it's sandwiched in the pocket, but a cool bit of kit anyway. So the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that I've changed 7 Series for this interior driving shot. Um, but it's still the same car, still the same 3 litre engine, diesel engine I should say. Um, and it allows me to ask the question, the key question then, how does the 7 Series drive? BMW is always being known as the ultimate driving machine. And the, the answer is it remarkably well. Um, this is a big car, um, but with the variety of driving modes you have on offer, if you put the car into sport mode, it really shrinks the car around you, makes it feel and respond like a much smaller car. So in sport mode you have a sharper steering, the throttle response is increased um, and it allows the, the, it gets the best out of the diesel engine so it really is a quick car actually in sport mode. Um, but the rare thing, because often when you put a car in sport mode it comes at the expense of ride comfort, but I'm in sport mode now and the ride is still supreme, it still has that magic carpet ride, cliche to say but this is a remarkably soothing car to drive. Um, you know, given its purpose, really, does it ultimately matter to people if it doesn't necessarily drive like a sports car? Probably not, because uh, it's destined for people to sit in the back and enjoy the tech and all the beautiful surroundings. But, um, you know, as an outright uh, driver's car, the XJ in the luxury market, that's a Jaguar XJ, probably betters it actually for driving. It has nicer steering and you feel a bit more connected to the car. The Jaguar, however, cannot match the BMW for um, ride comfort, interior space or tech. So it's a trade-off, um, but if you are lucky enough to have one of these cars, then by all means sit in the back and let the car take the strain, but if you do want to get into the, the driver's seat, put it in sport mode, and it drives much better than you might expect considering the big size of the car. Just some other clever bits of technology with the car. As you can see here, as is, as is the case on most luxury cars these days, you get a reversing camera, except the clever bit here with the 7 Series is that it takes a collection of the images from both the front sides and rear camera to do an over to formulate then an overhead shot which is really useful when you're maneuvering in places like multi-story car parks so that's really clever other clever bits of technology with the 7 series is the climate control system so this display here if we zoom in you see the word ionic there and as i understand it it charges the air that comes out of the ventilation there to make it more oxygen rich which helps with fighting fatigue when you're driving. All I know is I've been driving this car for the last two days, I haven't had as much sleep as I should and I've never felt drowsy driving the car. So does it work? I don't know, it could be a placebo but as I say I feel 
refreshed, shall we say, from driving the car. The other interesting cool thing is if we press this button here, it discharges a different fragrance. If we go to menu on the iDrive, you can see there there's a fragrance setting. So you can buy different fragrances for the 7 Series. We're currently on Blue Sweet number one, and that just gives a nice fragrant ambient atmosphere to the cabin. The 7 Series also has an inbuilt 4G SIM card offering you real-time access to the internet. I believe this only works when the car is parked um, to save any distraction for the driver but if we, so you can obviously do your Google searching there. If we scroll back and we go down to here you can read the latest news headlines when it loads. So yeah, so there you go, top stories there. So you will never, in theory, be bored in a traffic jam again. So much uh, information is available just at the twirl of this button. So whilst I'm sat in what probably is one of the most comfortable places in London right now, I thought I would show you a bit more of the key. Um, let's turn it on, which I think is that switch there. Slide up to unlock. So. Let's say we're in the house and we want to precondition the car uh, to either heat it to whatever you would like or cool it down in the summer. If we press activate now, press start. So we're in the car, I'm not entirely sure what will happen. Let's wait and see. So preconditioning activated. And then if we look here on the climate control, it's turned on the, the heat. Now I imagine it's set the temperature uh, it was when I left the car early, earlier. But either way, that's a really cool feature to have. Um, so whilst you're getting ready in the morning, you can get into either a nice warm car, toasty warm car in the winter, or a lovely cool car, uh, car in the summer. Very, very nice. So whilst I'm reclining here in the back, this is the tablet, uh, you'll remember that came out of that slot there. So if you wanted to be uh, to keep an eye on your chauffeur, for example, this tablet gives you the option of driver information. Um, so you can keep an eye on there, there you go. Uh, speed, fuel consumption, see how well he's driving, or hers driving I should say as well. Uh, if we flick back, as I say, you can control all the media functions, climate control, uh, seats, uh, the seats, there you go, you can actually from this uh, rear passenger seat control, uh, passenger seat, seat to my left and the seat I'm in as well. Um, obviously for obvious reasons you can't control the one in front, the driver's seat. Uh, but they can all be heated and cooled the seats and you've also got a massage function as well. Um, you've got seating controls there as well. So you're never going to get bored in the back of a 7 Series, that's for sure. And uh, as I say, loads and loads of space here. I've got my driver's seat all the way back because I've got quite long legs. Still an exceptional amount of room, really. And the um, with, the, with the, the amount of large glass in the cabin as well, it really feels a nice airy cabin, um, but exceptionally comfortable to ride in uh, the back of a 7 Series. So there you have it then, the BMW 7 Series. Is it the best in the class? Well, the Mercedes S-Class will always be the default choice for chauffeur cars or big luxury cars. But I have to say, given all the weight advantage with this new car and how much it weighs less and the fuel consumption it offers, given the size at 60 miles per gallon, it's incredible really how far these big luxury cars have come. Incredibly comfortable in the back, looks stylish, and the technology available is second to none as well. So tech-wise, I think it does beat the S-Class. And there's that overall ownership proposition with those emissions and incredible fuel figures. I think it betters it as well. I'll just leave you with this final little design touch on all the new 7 Series. If you're ever in doubt with which car you're looking at, look at all the 7s there. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you soon.